What's going on guys, Andrew of New Bar Gaming back here today. Today we're going to be covering some information we just got released in regards to the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG and what implications that may have for the Yu-Gi-Oh! Varane's show. Now here we have on screen right now are going to be two synchro monsters that have just announced are going to be coming to the TCG very soon. Now what's interesting about them is each of them pertains to an archetype of one of our main characters from Yu-Gi-Oh! Varane's, one to Yusaku and one to Revolver. Now before everyone goes ahead and gets super excited saying, oh synchros and brains confirmed, I I was actually digging for articles because I've heard a few people like say that and I wasn't personally having any luck coming up with anything from a reputable source 100% like confirming that like no first-hand resources saying oh Konami has said or like TV Tokyo has said synchros will appear in brains I haven't had any luck finding that and we have had monsters in the past that have been tied to archetypes for that like main characters use that never appear within the show for example uh, for Jaden there was a whole run of elemental heroes that were tied to the manga that were created for him and released his cards in the real world that never appeared in the anime show. Or in the case of during the middle of Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5, there was a Odd Eyes Gravity Dragon, which was a ritual monster that obviously Odd Eyes were the cards that Yuya used, but it never appeared in the show whatsoever. Now that being said, this I think is a bit of a different case than Odd Eyes Gravity Dragon in that these monsters match stat for stat the exact uh car the exact statistics of like main characters ace monsters and like the 3000 attack and 2500 defense on the Borlove dragon uh, which goes perfectly with a rival's main monster and then 2500 attack and 2000 defense goes perfectly for a main protagonist uh, ace monster card. And that Piling that on top of the fact that we do have episode 70 coming up pretty soon which is literally titled tuning bullets which considering a tuner is what you refer to as a monster that well synchro summons uh, it seems pretty likely like I would say 95 to 96 percent certain that unless TV Tokyo is really just trying to toy with its fan base that these cards are going to end up showing up in the show which I'm super excited about basically that means that we've now got fusion and summoning we've got synchro summoning and then there's probably a pretty good chance we'll at the very least get XZs I'm not sure about pendulums primarily just because we got so much focus on pendulums in arc 5 although to be fair we got a lot of focus on the other summoning methods as well but just Pendulum and Lynx have always sort of felt like opposites to me in some ways. Now maybe that's an odd way to think of it, but as someone who does casually play the card game, Lynx at least initially, like, really seemed like they were going to destroy Pendulums with the exception of Pendulum Magicians who just had crazy, crazy combos. Um, there were formats where that deck was essentially unbeatable and it's many, many incarnations. But outside of that, like the other Pendulum decks really struggled to get by for a while. I mean, there were some creative people who figured it out, but outside of Pendulum Magicians, they were not often topping tournaments the way they, ha they had been sometimes set up to do during their heyday when the mechanic was first introduced. And just because of the way it works with the multiple summonings and everything else, it just always felt like it was kind of an odd fit for Lynx most of the time versus like Synchros and XZs and Fusions seemed like they at least had more hope of going with it. Now that being said, as a casual player of the TCG, I have to say in the about a year, year and a half since we had the Link Summoning mechanic introduced, Synchros I would say have actually struggled the most even though I don't consider them as opposite on the summoning spectrum as I do Pendulums and Links. And a lot of that's just because if you look at a lot of the ace monsters, like ace monster cards that, synchro, that are synchros, such as Shooting Quasar Dragon, it requires multiple synchro monsters to be on the field. So by the time you have it, so you have multiple mon main monster zones that you can summon monsters from the extra deck into, figure that's going to take one link monster with at least two materials. Most, I'm sorry, with at least two link markers, most likely three. Then on top of that, you've got whatever materials it's going to take in order to summon the synchro monsters you need in order to get to that uh, like boss monster of your deck. So by the time you're done with that, you're talking anywhere from like six to eight monster cards that you're going through in a single turn, which may or more, you know, which makes for a combo that has plenty of rooms for the chain to be broken, which in a meta that is constantly evolving to basically set yourself up to shut down your opponent, make it so that they can't play Yu-Gi-Oh, so that you can win on top of like just being able to get that consistency really difficult and there aren't a ton of decks that can always get to that number of monsters with one turn when they're dedicating all of their resources to synchro summoning if they're dedicating their resources to other cards that like help them plus for example you have um so I use a Skull Dread, which if you put four monster cards into making that, then it allows you to draw four cards from your deck, then shuffle three back into the deck, or I'm sorry, put three on the bottom of your deck in any order. That's at least allowing you to 
dig further for more resources into the deck to keep comboing off. Whereas a lot of your synchro cards don't. I mean, the best examples of ones that do are like Formula Synchron that would then allow you to be able to draw a card or two, depending on like what monsters you use as its uh, synchro materials. But even with that being the case, it's not quite as potent as uh, Saryuja, which Saryuja would act as both a plus and opening the zones. So if hopefully some of that rant made sense, basically synchros have really, really suffered. And there was a little bit of a spark for, of hope for them here recently with there was a new card called Junk Speeder released as part of the Yusei Megaton. And you can look up some combo videos of it online, but in essence, there was a way you could chain off with it so you went into three copies of Psyframe Lord Omega, which is pretty much the singular synchro monster that's had any consistent relevance ever since Links were introduced because it can banish itself from that single extra monster zone and remove a card from your opponent. Then when it resummons itself through its own effect, it can go into the main monster zone, so it's not clogging up your extra monster zone and basically if you have three of them you can use one extra monster zone to get all three of those out banish three cards from your opponent's hand which they will eventually get back then summon those three back into the main monster zones once more if you're curious about the combo i'd suggest looking up some videos for example uh, team samurai x1 he made a fantastic video on a deck involving that combo it'd be a great one to check out and i'm sure there are other really good ones out there that's just the first one that comes to mind off the top of my head so with all that being said, seeing these cards and the fact that Konami's making more synchro cards on top of the fact that they're for main characters and will likely appear in the anime, so they'll likely want to print some cards that actually support these is very exciting to me as a player because the synchro mechanic as a whole was always one that was a lot of fun to use to me and I know a lot of other people like that. So this shows that Konami will likely be investing some serious effort in trying to make the you know synchro summoning mechanic at least have some functionality again and the fact that you know yusaku and revolver both have decks that are still very potent in their link summoning mechanics um very much implies to me that their synchro monsters are going to have some serious coherency and flow with link monsters so let's go ahead and finally get into talking about these cards themselves shall we okay so starting off with uh you, the one that's tied to yusaku's archetype we're gonna have a level 7 dark cybers dragon uh it's taxing me 2500 defense 2000 so the material is going to be one tuner and one or more non-tuner monsters. You control a link monster. Your opponent cannot target monsters you control for attacks or card effects except this one. So there's a little bit of subtle tying in with um, link monsters there. I'm hoping they create some materials, like some si other cybers archetype monsters that aren't necessarily from the extra deck that combo off well into like tying link summoning and synchro summoning together. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but we do have a little bit of protection tying in, you know, links and synchros there already, which is something to look forward to. Also note how that monster is dark attribute. They seem to be leaning at least somewhat in the direction of making Yusaku's deck more and more focused on that dark attribute, which makes sense because it ties in with the fact that I is, of course, the dark attributed Ignis. Anyway, moving forward with that, then we've got our uh, revolvers, which is going to be Borolode Savage Dragon, level 8 dark dragon synchro monster, attack 3000, defense 2500. Uh, it's going to be one tuner and one or more non-tuner monsters, and you can only use this card names effect number three once per turn at least that's the way i'm reading that um but anyway moving on to that so first we're going to have this card is synchro summon you can equip one link monster from your graveyard to this card and if you do place oral counters on this card equal to the card's link ranking so or i'm sorry rating so with that being said we do have once more a little bit of tying in between the link mechanic and synchro mechanic which is cool to see and then uh number two this card gains attack equal to half the attack of the monster equipped to it by this effect and number three when an opponent's card or effect is activated you can summon one Boral. i'm sorry you can remove one Boral character from this card to negate the activation now out of these two cards i would definitely say revolver came out on top because he does have the ability to negate any card's activation by removing a Boral counter, which very much ties into the way the TCG has been evolving. Essentially, what makes a good deck nowadays is going to be preventing your opponent from playing Yu-Gi-Oh! by having negations like that, and your best defense is preventing your opponent from preventing you from playing Yu-Gi-Oh! So everything now is very much based off of negations rather than just having giant beat sticks that can destroy your opponent's life points. For example, we've had like Dark Requiem Exceeds Dragon. You detach one Exceeds material and it basically sucks away all of one of your opponent's monster's attack points. Should seem like a really good card on paper, right? But it's seen almost no meta play just because it doesn't have a whole lot of negation power. I mean, it does have the ability to negate monster effects, but going into it requires a lot of other materials and just Generally speaking, most decks have other more efficient ways of doing that. I personally, in some of my casual decks, have found ways of using it just because I really adore that dragon and its artwork, and I loved Yuto's character in Arc 5, but that's a different subject for a different day. So what does this all mean for the anime? 
Well, it means that that Tuning Bullet episode is most likely going to see us pull, like, Revolver pour, pull out a uh, Borolode Savage Dragon as kind of the shocking twist to the duel. Maybe he's losing to Wendy, and then he just pulls off this typical Revolver smirk on his face and be like, I haven't lost yet. Then he Synchro Summons this, blows everybody away, because it's the first Synchro Summon we've seen in the show, and then pulls off this awesome comeback using Borolode Savage Dragon. Now, unfortunately, the fact that Yusaku also has one of these Synchro Monsters to me likely indicates that they aren't necessarily using synchros as a mechanic to like deviate factions. I was hoping the fact that Revolver mentioned like Yusaku having advanced his dueling when he saw that he had managed to fusion summon indicated that maybe they were taking a little bit of inspiration from Arc 5 and they were going to have this multi-sided war where each side of the war kind of had their own specialty of summoning method. I thought that was really cool because it found a way to tie summoning mechanics into the story of Reigns. I'm hoping they can still do that here and I don't see any reason that they can't necessarily. I mean Zexel certainly had ways of tying Xyz summoning in like XZ summoning would seem to be tied to the number cards, and everybody made a big deal about XZ summoning and when people had number cards, so there was at least a loose tie in there. Um, and, but unfortunately, it does also smash part of my theory that I was getting at um, when to trying to tie Owie to Aqua, and that maybe the characters ca that can use these more advanced summoning methods have some ties to the Ignis, and the Ignises are kind of unlocking them, and then maybe Revolver has ties to something else, and that's unlocking the Synchro summoning, but once more, Yusaku's able to do it, and Revolver's able to do it when Revolver doesn't have an Ignis where Yusaku does, and they're both on totally opposite sides of this war. Yusaku's trying to find uh, peace, whereas Revolver's on one of the attacking sides. So I don't think summoning mechanics have a ton to do with the story. I hope I'm proven wrong, because I think that always makes it more interesting. But nonetheless, I am very excited about this, because I feel like the more summoning mechanics you have, the less stale the duels get. Out of um, all the shows, I feel like Arc 5 demonstrated that, at least when it was getting its duels right, because believe me, some of the action duels really became way too plot armory for my liking. There were times where it was genuinely exciting because you got to see all kinds of summoning methods used within and it made the duels at least a little bit less predictable to watch. I mean you could still generally tell which character was going to win but you didn't necessarily know which combo they were going for versus up to this point in Brains uh, with the exception of those handful of fusions and rituals we've seen since season two started. Season one was basically oh they're spamming out like four monsters to go into a link four whoopee i haven't seen this before so i think it's gonna amp up the duels a little bit and i don't think it's gonna hurt in any way so i'm very excited about this uh if you enjoyed the video guys be sure to like comment and subscribe down below what are your thoughts on all this do you think we're now guaranteed to see synchro summoning in the show or do you still have your doubts like i do regardless we should know in a few days uh do you think this will have any tie-ins to the plot would you like to see it tied into the plot and if so how so um like i said before if you enjoy be sure to like comment and subscribe down below and i'll catch you guys next time on some more Yu-Gi-Oh! Brains content.